Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Saturday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there and more importantly, staying safe. We have some big time storms firing up in Texas as I speak right now. We're going to give you an update on that, but really speak on ahead of the storm as we always do in these videos. There's a lot of great people out there to go live and for you folks who live in portions of Texas, southern Oklahoma, and even other portions of like Missouri, um, areas of Western Illinois, even areas of Southern Iowa that could be under the gun over the next several hours. You certainly want to pay attention to those people who do go live, but we're going to keep you guys ahead of the storm and give you some updated information between now and the overnight hours ahead of the storms. But the majority of this video is going to be discussing the severe weather risk for tomorrow. It has increased for portions of the Midwest, a pretty large portion of the Midwest, but we can expect severe weather for also for areas of Texas again, for areas of the Mid-Atlantic, the Southern Appalachian Mountains, uh, the Ohio Valley, the Mid-South, even portions of the Southeast. So we're going to try to explain this, give you some really good information, not get super detailed on it like we did in this morning's video. We're not going to talk much on the ingredients, but we are going to talk about a little bit what's driving these waves of storms that are kind of rotating around a ridge of high pressure an upper ridge and we're going to kind of discuss that we call it ridge riders or even the ring of fire and uh, that's literally a ring that sets up around an upper ridge and you just have these areas of storms doing a lot of yard work today and i got obviously a piece of grass or something in my eye that's why i was blinking a lot there but anyways we're going to discuss this try to figure it out for you folks i do want to quickly quickly mention i'm going to show the h triple r model but guys the models the short range models all models do a terrible job in these kind of setups when it's trying to predict these rounds of storms that are rounding an upper ridge they don't do great uh, you know sometimes they can be hundreds of miles off the timing can be completely off so we're certainly going to try to give our best guess at this and keep you guys aware and ahead of the storm if you folks have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it if you guys got anything that i can pray about or pray over as always please put those in the comments below i'm going to ask for a prayer request really quick to see if uh if this grass can get out my eye i've done a, i did a ton of yard work today in fact as soon as i did the morning video went right outside I've been doing yard work ever since took a shower came in then started this video that's i've been doing it ever since so anyways let's talk about the weather so right now we still have the enhanced risk guys all right still an enhanced risk level three out of five a pretty large slight risk up here in the Illinois, northern Missouri, southeast Iowa area. The tornado risk is a 5% risk between now and the next several hours. I'm expecting a few potential big time supercells that could potentially produce a tornado between now and the next several hours in this region. Got a 2% risk of a tornado down here. The wind threat has increased, guys. The wind threat now, you have a 30% risk. You basically have a 30% hatch risk and also portions of a 15% hatch, hatch rich, risk. A 30% chance to see winds pushing 50 knots or higher, 55 to 60 miles per hour. But you also have a 10% risk in the black outlined area of winds pushing 65 knots or higher. That's around hurricane force wind and mile per hour reading. Okay, hail threat is there. We've known this. Big time hail is possible. You have that 30% risk of one inch in diameter hail and then also a 10% hatch risk, two inch or larger diameter hail within 25 miles in any given location in this black outline region. So let's get rolling. What we do want to talk about is about a, about an hour ago when it was about 410. So uh, a little under an hour ago, we had this mesoscale uh, discussion issued. Severe potential watch likely it's an 80% chance. In fact, by the time some of you folks watch this video, there already will be either a severe thunderstorm watch or a tornado watch out for this area. Most likely will be a severe thunderstorm watch. It says vigorous thunderstorm development expected from, from 4 to 6 p.m. Central Time. Very large hail and intense gusts are possible. Lots of convective fuel, cape, uh, storm fuel for these storms to fuel off of. And in fact, you look at what's going on right at this moment. And remember, this is as of 3.51 Central Time. As of me making this video now, you have storms, you know, getting going, but nothing really explosive as of now. But we'll watch this entire region back here now, Abilene, and we'll see these storms slowly drift and when I say slowly, they can be quite slow, and we'll see if they'll make it all the way to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and then eventually they'll make it all the way into northeast Texas. Watching already some big time, I wouldn't say big time, but some storm development here. 
uh, north of San Antonio and just west of Austin. So we'll see what happens with that. And we'll give you short latest short range model guidance on what potentially could happen over the next several hours. We'll look at the latest 19Z run and shows the storm really exploding here right in this region of Texas. Not going to get super detailed with this because by the time some of you folks watch this, um, it'll be a now thing. But, uh, you know, in and around the Vernon area, Seymour regions, uh, this will drift very slowly at this point. If you're wondering what time frame we're at, we're at 8 p.m. Back it up one hour from the time you see here because this, this is in Eastern time and we're looking at Central time. These storms will drift to the late evening hours, start knocking on the doorstep of uh, Wichita Falls, will begin to drift really closely to the Jacksboro area, and then... We'll start to get into the Weatherford area, Mineral Wells region. And then I would say most model guidance have the, has this storm, these storms moving through the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In fact, what's pretty impressive about the HRRR model is it's still on track from what I showed this morning. I would say sometime around 10 to 1 a.m., expect some storms to move through the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And then also into these storms will also be possible in southern Oklahoma. But to me... This looks like it'll be the most intense in this section right here of North Texas. But this continues. This will weaken very quickly as it loses that convective fuel needed for these storms to maintain itself. And I think by the time it gets into Northeast Texas, Southeast uh, Oklahoma, this will lose its punch and then completely, completely uh, fall apart by the time we get into tomorrow morning. So that's the update on that. I want to give you an update also on what potentially can happen up here in Missouri. And I would say really within the next two to three hours, I'm watching the AAAR model was really like this, a storm to right across far northern Missouri. This storm could be a big one. All right, so I'm going to try to look at Google Maps. My phone's about to go dead. I've not kept it on the charger uh, today. But Maryville, watch out. Bethany, watch out for a storm. Also into northeast areas of Missouri, too. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the right state here. Uh, Kirksville, uh, you guys, Memphis, Missouri, not Tennessee. Watch out in these regions. These little smaller towns and communities. Between now and the next, between now and the next five hours, I would say, some big storms could fly across the, these counties of northern Missouri, and these could produce a tornado. But the tornado threat is only a five percent risk. The biggest threat is large hail, some damaging winds. But also in southern Iowa, some big storms are possible in this region. And then we'll see what happens as we get into the around the midnight time frame. I think this will try to evolve into a mesoscale convective system. Basically a line of intense storms loses its tornado threat somewhat. And it could be producing some large hail, some damaging winds into northern Illinois tonight. And one thing I want to quickly mention, I have not been able to really to answer the comments from this morning's video. I do apologize. I'm going to answer some of them this evening when I can sit down and mellow out a little bit. Uh, but these storms, uh, Rockford, uh, basically anybody in northern northern Missouri, far, I'm sorry, northern Illinois, far, far, far southern um, Wisconsin could see some active weather overnight tonight. In fact, the Chicago region, you guys overnight tonight, the wee hours of the morning, could get a nasty line of storms that moves through the region. These storms will be moving through areas of kind of north central and then eventually maybe central Illinois. And then they kind of blast through Indiana where, you know, areas like Lafayette, South Bend, you guys could get some storms at around 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Indianapolis, you guys could be waking up to some big time storms, maybe producing very heavy rain, frequent lightning, gusty winds. But remember, it's going to be difficult to pinpoint exactly the intensity of these storms and also just the timing. But I can tell you some short range model guides has really liked the idea. And then we'll stop it for Sunday morning at around 7 a.m. And then we'll go on and talk about the next day. But uh, please be careful in this region of northern, northern Missouri. I would say watch out for a couple cells. I think if anybody's going to produce a tornado, it would be right up here in northern Missouri over the next several hours. So please be weather aware in this region. Let's talk about what could happen tomorrow. Slight risk, again, kind of in the same area that we have an enhanced risk right now in southern Oklahoma, north Texas. Okay, uh, Slight risk, and then you got a huge enhanced risk. It's pretty big. 
uh, for far eastern Nebraska, a little small corner of northeast Kansas. Uh, northern Missouri will be under the gun again, large portion of central and southern Iowa, and then western Illinois, and then a slight risk which expands around this. But check out this marginal risk that dips down into Kentucky, Tennessee, the Appalachian Mountains, even all the way down here to North Alabama, North Georgia, all the way into the upstate of South Carolina, Western Virginia, North Carolina, even areas of West, West Virginia, Ohio. I wouldn't be surprised one bit if a slight risk is issued on the next update into this region. Okay, this is a tricky setup. This is, like I said, this is one of these setups where the Storm Prediction Center is going to change a lot. When confidence increases, there is a 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in any given location tomorrow. This does include Des Moines, surrounding regions, and then southwest into Iowa. So, you know, if you're in regions, if you're in Omaha, Omaha, you might as well say you have a 5% risk. Um, but, you know, Creston, uh, Red Oak areas, Nebraska City, Auburn, um, well, no, not quite into that region, but risk of tornadoes is a 5% risk right now. But the damaging wind threat is is going to be intense tomorrow. Same region that you have a tornado threat, you have a the highest damaging wind threat, okay? You have not only a 30% risk of, of 50 knots or higher winds, you also have the hatch risk, which is a 10% risk in the black outline region right here of winds pushing 65 knots or higher. 70 to 75 mile per hour winds. Then you also have a 15% hatch risk down here, which is a 10% risk also of the significant winds, 65 knots or higher. So um, I would honestly say, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I can almost, I would say there's a 90% chance slight risk gets issued down to Kentucky, Tennessee, these regions right here for tomorrow um, when confidence increases. Hell threat will be there. 30% hatched risk up for the enhanced region. In fact, this is hell driven, I would say. So large hail expected. One inch of diameter or larger is likely, but you also have the 10% risk. Also in the 30% risk of hail pushing two inch of diameter or larger. So you also got the big hell threat down here. So let's go on and break it down the best we can. We'll start out in Nebraska up here in the enhanced risk area. I would say as early as tomorrow afternoon around 3 p.m., storms begin to fire and kind of western to central Nebraska. They sweep through the state of, of Nebraska. I think they become their most intense as they enter eastern Nebraska. So Omaha, you could be under the gun. I'm trying to look here. Lincoln, Columbus, Norfolk, uh, Grand Island. Some storms could sweep through later tomorrow evening, 8, 9 p.m. Then these storms make their way through, and I say by the time you get just after midnight, they're done for you folks. I know I went through Nebraska very quickly. And we'll do it again tomorrow to see what the update information is. Iowa will be a big state for severe weather tomorrow. We'll start off around 4 p.m. Not a whole lot going on. Big storm explodes here. Just, I would say, that is, what is that? Yeah, that is just north of Des Moines. Big storm fires up here. Could get very intense. Large hail. A tornado is possible with this. And damaging winds. Ames, Fort Dodge. H triple R model wants to show a big storm right on top of you guys. 6, 7 p.m. But remember, this is an exact science. It's just a model. This storm continues to cruise and might evolve into more of a kind of embedded line of storms as it enters eastern Iowa. But at this point, you got three areas, but there isn't guaranteed to be three areas. And this is when it gets tricky, guys. It really does. Uh, could have some big storms around the Omaha area around 8 p.m. This could be producing a tornado. The tornado threat's highest right in here where the surface low is popping off here. Better Ken Maddox right in here. So I would I would really watch out just west and southwest of Des Moines um, into Omaha. I would watch out for a tornado in this region here. You keep this going. Like I said, this begins to kind of congeal very quickly into the late evening hours, and then you just have a big blob of showers and storms sweeping through the state of Iowa. This is bringing a lot of rain, but you could have this developing as we're getting into just after the midnight time frame into a pretty intense line of storms as it begins to dip down in southern Missouri also. Remember, I'm sorry, northern Missouri. Remember, northern Missouri has an enhanced risk too, but the latest HRRR model, long range, doesn't show much storm development until you get into the overnight hours. At this point's 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, a line of storms sweeping through, Northern Missouri, eastern um, Iowa. So at this point, eastern Iowa, 
portions of Iowa could get two to three rounds of storms. This is looking like a nasty bowing out line of storms in the wee hours of the morning, Monday morning. So, and then this sweeps through, heads on out. Uh, we look at a more broader view in Missouri, Illinois. Remember, you could have this ongoing complex area of storms. We'll talk more on that. We'll go to the, uh, for you folks in the Mid-Atlantic, Southern Appalachian Mountains here in a second. I'm not leaving you folks high and dry. I'm just focusing in on uh, Illinois and Missouri right now. But we keep this going. I do want to mention, what's gonna, th this, is, this is when it gets tricky. What's going to be going on here early tomorrow afternoon in Kentucky, Southern Indiana, Southern Illinois? Could this be an intense line of storms? Could this be hardly nothing? It's a big question mark. You know, Paducah over to Lexington, Kentucky. This is kind of dipping down to the Bowling Green area into tomorrow afternoon. How intense, how non-intense will these storms? Will there be anything? Will this be much more intense? Is it showing? Shows a very intense storm here in southeast Illinois. And then you're thinking, where are all the storms? Well, the atmosphere rejuvenates itself. We're getting into tomorrow evening, right? And then the latest HRRR model wants to show the Evansville, Paducah regions, down here to Clarksville, Tennessee. Um, this entire region right here getting very, basically getting lit up with severe storms uh, tomorrow, late afternoon, tomorrow evening. And then this might develop into in what we call an MCS. But then watch these storms. Here comes another line. You got a line, kind of a comp like an area right here, an area right here. At this point, it's about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. But look at this nasty line of storms making its way through northern and central Missouri, um, moving through all of Illinois into the middle of the night. At this point, it's about, I mean, this is about 7 a.m. Monday morning. And you got another line of storms moving through the entire state of Illinois. Or will there be? It's tough. It's tough to figure out. Now, this entire area pretty much only has a marginal risk tomorrow. But, but, I do think a slight risk will get issued. First off, you watch this area of storms, right? This will be sweeping through Ohio tomorrow morning, potentially. All right, this is making its way into the mountainous regions, the hilly regions of the southern and central Appalachian Mountains. Sweeping through. How much does it maintain intensity? At this point, we're about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. you got a line of storms from the HRRR model showing up all the way from western Kentucky all the way into the mid-Atlantic, portions of West Virginia, Virginia. This is digging down. Is this going to re-intensify as it gets down into you know, central to eastern Tennessee, uh, the Piedmont, the triad of uh, North Carolina, western Virginia? It's a big question, but look at this thing. It's 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 very long, all right, and it's just moving in. Is this intense? At this point, it's about 6 or 7 p.m., and we have what looks like a weakening line of storms moving all throughout the Carolinas, maybe even north Georgia, and then you have another line of storms over here. It's very odd. You got all kinds of a weird flow out there, um, but yeah, so that's a wild card. I, I, I would... To me, I always aim towards a more aggressive scenario with these MCS setups, mesoscale convective systems. Every time I say MCS, it's a line of intense storms. Um, these little shortwave pieces of energy that move through. So I'd watch this area tomorrow. It could get quite intense. It's hard to figure out timing, how intense the line will be. But uh, we'll also you know, mention Texas, you guys. Boom, another area of storms tomorrow and kind of... Uh, more so western Texas. These storms could explode, be quite intense, and uh, kind of drive themselves throughout the late evening, overnight hours, tomorrow night throughout north Texas. Same areas that are about to get lit up with storms over the next several hours, and then the weekend. I don't think tomorrow will be as big of a deal for Texas, but that could change. But really the pattern you're seeing, guys, and this is for starting off tomorrow morning, you see this nose right here, this ridge with orange and and kind of mustard color yellow right here, that is our ridge nudging up right here. And as this nudges up, the flow, that's not what I wanted. All right, you're not going to work for me. Let's see if we can try this again. Yeah, she ain't going to work for me. All right, no worries. But the flow moves like this and then comes back down. So you get these little surface lows that kind of move this up, up this way. You know, throws enough kinematic energy, kinematic meaning wind energy aloft for a little spin up up here but these things kind of continue to go along the flow you got troughing here troughing here and then just round that 
upper portion of this ridge and then dip back south. And uh, you can actually see this with the cape. This is the cape, surface based cape. You see how it pulses up? So this starts off this afternoon, goes all the way into tomorrow, pulses up right there, and then it's pulsing up again for Monday afternoon. But, you know, I just want to throw a GIF at you. It looks pretty cool, right? So that's all I got, guys. Hopefully it helps you. Stay safe out there tonight. Uh, give one last look at the radar and what's going on right now. And, yeah, these storms are unfolding pretty quickly here. It looks already looks more intense than it did 20 minutes ago. Stay safe out there in Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa. God bless all y'all. have you another update in the morning.